Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Uh, yes, here we are together again on the radio. He asked me today if um, if um, Katie Holmes is really going to marry Tom Cruise. And I told him. Uh, I told him uh, the information is actually available. Uh, you just have to check page one eighty eight. Dianetic humor there. Actually, we don't know if Katie Holmes is going to marry Tom Cruise yet. She still has to take that personality test over there in Hollywood Boulevard. It was, uh, part of the hasn't done that yet. <coughs> Thank you for tuning in. In this hour of the program, uh, you know, I, as you know, am the object of many sycophants. People who thank me for changing their lives, turning their lives around, restoring their balls. I get a lot of calls like that and a lot of feedback like that in the street from people. And it is uh, very richly rewarding. But of course, somewhat deceiving to me because I generally only hear from the people who thank me for my work. People who appreciate what they say I have done. People whose lives have been improved by things I've said and done on this program. The dissatisfied, the disaffected, the angry, the bitter. We don't hear from them as often. Some of them just tune out. Some of them continue to listen in amazement as I continue with my agenda here. Talking about the things I believe wholeheartedly in. And um, although we have devoted um, hours on the program to people who hate me, I'm not going to do that this hour. Because there's a much larger audience of people who don't want to take the energy to hate me. In fact, they may be perplexed or just simply uh, have more complex feelings about me and what I stand for. Some of you have been victims of my advice. Husbands or boyfriends have left you. You've gotten dumped. You were turned into a mere booty call. Somebody showed you an ATM receipt and you believed they were rich and you went and had sex with them, whatever. There are many of my victims out there. And uh, while you don't hate me, you definitely believe that some of the things I say are just wrong. Talking to the haters is fun, and we uh, certainly give them their share of airtime. But in this hour, I'm not necessarily looking for people who hate me. In this hour, I want to talk to you if you think that things I say on the air, specific things I tell the callers, or specific things that I say when I'm speaking, just as I'm speaking to you now, are just wrong. They're wrong. I'm not talking about factual errors, by the way. So, you know, if I once gave a... I once gave a method for getting rid of red ants and it turned out to not be effective. The boric acid is only for getting rid of cockroaches but not red ants. Don't call about that stuff, okay? Minor uh, trip-ups or factual errors. You know, Send those by email and uh, we'll acknowledge the major ones. Who David Beckham plays for. I, you know, I don't need to hear that. Don't need to hear that. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm talking about theorems that have been expressed on this program, advice that is given, homilies, you know what I'm talking about. Every day on this program, I tell people um, what to do about their relationships, how to avoid relationships. I tell people that uh, your girlfriend or your wife's best friend will never be your friend. Things like that. There may be things I've said here that you think are just dead wrong. In fact, destructive. 
So when we talk to the haters, we're talking to the extremists out there. And, of course, that makes for very, very entertaining radio to talk to them. And we'll continue doing that. But in this hour, I want to talk to people who don't even want to take the energy hating me. Or maybe they just think I'm misguided. They don't get angry enough to hate me over that. They just simply think that things I say, things I believe, things I express on this program every day are just plain wrong. If you think there are things I say on the air that it's just wrong to say them, you wholeheartedly disagree. You think somehow the advice I give or the things I say are destructive or dangerous. You're the person I want to talk to. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If you had sex with me because I said I was a doctor, by the time you find out I'm not a doctor, guess what? I had sex with you. I got what I wanted. Yes. Next victim. The Tom Likas. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 500 tom All right. There are things I say on the raw, the air that you, just, that you think are just plain wrong. What are those things? Linda on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hi. I do not dislike you. I think you're a cool guy. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was, I was changing the radio stations, and all of a sudden, I happened upon something. I didn't even realize it was your show. And all of a sudden, I heard some guy giving what I thought was like the worst advice I had ever heard. It had something to do with your male 101, your, your something that you tell men about how to start relationships or get sex or something. What advice was that? Okay, so I'm listening, and I hear you telling something about that you should, like if you go out on a first date, this whole thing about there's all these little rules, like you should never spend more than twenty dollars on well, the first forty dollars actually. Okay, forty dollars, and you should never do this and that. And everything that you said, I thought, oh my god, because every time I talk to one of my girlfriends, you know, um, I've got a lot of single friends, and they meet guys, and there'll be guys that you know end up they're great guys, and there there are guys that are just what we consider just losers and just you you can't even believe oh my god i can't believe i ever went out with him so one of my girlfriends had gone out with a guy and she met him she really liked the guy she, she thought he was a nice guy and on her first date you know she didn't decide that she would or wouldn't have sex with him um it, the way that most of my girlfriends look at it is if we go out with a guy we you know we just kind of let things go and see how we feel if you really like the guy you know it doesn't you know, you might have sex the first date, you might not, but if the guy is just really seems like somebody you'd never want to see again, you wouldn't. So she went out with this guy, she thought he was a great guy, she called me after the date and she said, oh my God, it was a nightmare. She said, first of all, we, he takes me to this place, uh, some little Italian place, they had, um, they didn't even have like beer or wine. He had brought his own bottle, and you know that two buck chuck that you yeah. buy the, uh -huh. you know, the two dollar bottle. She Good said, thinking. Yeah. Well, he, I'm, I guess he thought so, but she told me that she says, okay. She said he comes and picks me up. We go to this place. Um, it there was just you know a few things on the menu. There was nothing that she really liked, but she picked something out. He pulls out this bottle of two dollar wine, and afterwards. He uh, just started talking to her about, well, do you want to come to my place or do you want to, you know, or we'll go to yours. And she said to me, you know what, he just, he, he was so, and you know what, we call these guys, we call them cheese, sleaze, and geese. Geese, if they're older guys that think, who are they, you know, they're like, you know. Oh, darling, let, let, me, let, me be, let me be really frank with you. I see on the screen your age is 45. The guys we're talking to don't date women your age. All right, well, actually, the girlfriends that I'm talking about, the single, I'm married, but the girlfriends that I have a lot of friends because of my work that are all in late 20s to late 30s, and mm -hmm. most of them are probably, like this girl that I'm talking about yeah. is 32. She's very cute, blonde, blue eyes. Um, she doesn't even look her but age. These guys, I advise, are not looking for relationships. They're looking for sex. Right, but see, he probably, she really liked him. He, what I'm saying is that he would have very likely gotten sex from her his mistake was having dinner with her at all but when when she she called me and she said oh my god she said this guy was a nightmare yeah, he should have so he should have avoided that altogether and hooked up for a drink after she had dinner 
then she couldn't critique his choice of restaurant. Okay. I and that's something I advise guys to do all the time. So that you don't know that they're really being really cheap. And see, it's not, she wasn't looking no, for... No, no, more to say, not even for that reason. It's so that the guy can save money. Why, why should a guy spend all this money on a restaurant? Well, that's true, except with this guy, you know, whipping out a $2 bottle of wine, and then he expects, she was like... You want to know something? Oh. Most women don't know the difference. Maybe your friend did. Maybe you would. But most women don't. I have served two buck chuck at my home. And by the way, when I, I have a wine cellar. Now, what I have done in the past is I have opened, you know, ten bottles of wine at a party. Eight of them are two buck chuck. Two of them are really good bottles. What do you think most people drink? Well, probably the two dollar. That's right. Yeah. They don't know the difference. Well, it was just that when I heard you saying this is a way to, you know, like you were spend talking as about little as to possible to bed. Yeah. Well, I can see spending, you know, not spending a lot of money, but you were saying all these things that what and things? I can't, unfortunately, it was a couple of weeks ago, and well, I you're calling up to tell me what's wrong, and I'm 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 giving you my ear. I'm listening. Okay, tell yeah. me, the, and you don't even know what they are. Well, I remember that about the money, but it was just a lot of things that had to do with getting a girl into bed are a lot of the things that my friends, that's the, you know, that would be the turnoff where they, the guy would never get him into bed. Well, again, I, I do also believe that people tend to have friends who are like themselves. Uh, you have heard on this program countless men call in here and thank me and say that they're getting more ass than a toilet seat now because... <laughs> Because they have done what I've recommended to them. And generally speaking, spending as little money on a woman as possible is very effective. Well, I understand. In I fact, uh, in fact I, uh, <laughs> this is based on the guys I know who do the exact opposite. This all started with one guy who used to work on our show who used to spend lots of money on women. To spend it on uh, nice restaurants, on a bottle of champagne, even occasionally renting a limousine. And he would say, I can't figure out why I'm not getting anywhere. And I told him, it's because you're spending money on women. Stop doing it. And the guys who take my advice, they, they, they start getting sex, which they weren't getting before. Well, they're getting sex maybe, but... Is That's what they want. And and so these are guys that want sex and they really don't want a girlfriend or they don't Correct. Want In fact, I tell them not to have a girlfriend. Not to get married. And what's in it for guys? I suppose your advice, I guess, I, I it makes sense. I... You know, Linda, you've been reading the newspaper since you've come to California from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you see what divorce is like in California? Oh, I know. Yeah, what's in it for a guy to get married here? Well, I guess if you're at the age where you want to have a family. You know, I, I think that I've always said, you know, marriage personally, my, my opinion has always been really you don't need to get married unless you... Do, you know, I, I don't think people need to pair up, you know, two by two. I don't think you need mm -hmm. another half. But I do think that if you really want that that family thing, that it's probably a better idea to have the, the, the dad and the mom and the, the family Great. unit. That should start at no earlier than uh, at 25 minimum. And I would say uh, not until you are well settled into your great career. Uh, not while you're in college, not while you're in high school, not while you're working your way up as a lawyer or a doctor or as an architect. Once you've reached the pinnacle of your success, you get the hottest, youngest chicks available. <laughs> and you do not uh, do this any uh, any sooner than that. Now, come on. You, you can say, ooh, that's evil to say that, but you can't say it's wrong. Well, you have a point. So you're saying that the guys that you're telling... Uh, about having sex and not having a relationship would be guys that are maybe under 30. Our, guy, our audience is men 20 to 44 years old. That's our audience. Mm -hmm. And I say, especially in states like California and Washington State, there is nothing to be gained by a guy getting married or moving in with a woman. Have sex, have fun, experiment, have threesomes, do whatever you want. Just don't 
do have any financial transactions with women. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it. Women are so independent, they don't need us. That's great. I'm glad to hear it, because uh, our, our boys don't pay for anything. Women love to say they don't need men. You know, I'm the original feminist. I think that's great, because uh, our men aren't giving women anything. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess, actually, you do have a point, and I guess if I were a guy, I would probably uh, be very happy to have gotten your advice. Yeah, and that's what it's all about, dear. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for letting me uh, give you my opinion. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. And uh, we're letting you call in if there's advice I've given or things I say that you think are just plain wrong. Marilyn, hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hey, I get the greatest entertainment from your show. Good. Yeah, it's when I'm driving around because actually instead of getting mad, I just take it with a grain of salt and I laugh. Ah. But there is one thing I would like to correct you on. What's that? Okay. The whole thing is, is when you get off on the women that go 100% on the birth control, if you feel that strong about not wanting to have a child... Go get the snip step. And uh, dear, uh, uh, most of my this. guys, most of my guys don't want to have a kid today. Well, that doesn't mean that when they're thirty-five, they're not going to want to do that. Right on, and that's great. So let them go get the snip, so that they don't get the paternity test scream of terrors later on. And then when they decide, yes, now I do want to have children, just go back and research. Dear, uh, dear, only sixty percent of vasectomies are reversible. The other forty percent are not. Well, on, to, I mean, on top of that, really dear, on top of that, most doctors mm -hmm. will not perform a vasectomy on a guy who has never been married and doesn't have any children. Just like they won't tie the tubes of a woman that's 26, right? Because Done. Say, that's oh, right. So it's really not a valid option for most guys. Really? Mm -hmm. I guess it would be then for the ones that definitely never, ever want to have children. Even then, yeah, it's hard that. finding a doctor who will do that. Right on. I just thought there might be a simple way for guys to just kind of... And nothing simple like about having surgery. The simple way is to use condoms all the time. Right and, on, also, yeah. and also to tell women, uh, look, if you ever got pregnant, I need to know. Do you have any doubt about what you would do? And if they have any doubt, to get out of there. Oh, also tell guys, tell guys to watch out for women because they can have cold sores in their mouths and you not well, know it. Dear, I'm not, you know what, I'm not a sex education teacher here. Oh, okay? well, you know, but that's... Just I'll tell you what, yeah, you call Dr. Dina Dell or some show like that. I, I really don't get involved in that, all right? Right on, Tom. I got, my guys just want to get laid. They don't want to hear uh, how sausage is made or unmade, oh. for that matter. You know what I'm talking about? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Ron. Hey, how you doing? Great. Um, just uh, wanted to clarify, I definitely don't hate you. I actually listen to you a lot, and I, I, find, it, I find it really entertaining. Good. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to, to, to share that when, when my parents were fairly young uh, in dating before they were married, um, my mom wasn't exactly the nicest woman in the world to my father. She definitely... She definitely made her share of, you know, mistakes and stuff and, and, and treats him kind of bad. My dad's kind of a passive guy. And, uh, you know, she, she crossed a lot of lines that, you know, you, you, you often tell your listeners, you know, the second this, this chick does this, cut her off immediately, you know. Um, but then after they got married, she, she sort of settled down and calmed down and, and has just become a real wonderful person and, and a role model in my life. And it's just, uh, I mean, that's fine. I'm sure that happens all the time. But I just keep thinking that, you know, if, if, if my father would have, you know, taken the other route earlier on, you know, and, and just said, look, you know, you're, you're not a good woman to me and this and that and thrown to the curb, you know, I... This marriage would never happen. This family would never happen. Right. I wouldn't be around. So, so far, you spent a minute and ten seconds telling me that my advice is right. Uh, I don't know that it, that it is. If uh, your I father had followed is. my advice, he'd have been a lot better off. How's that? Because when somebody treats you like that, you dump that bitch. Right. But we have a wonderful family now. So, I mean, how, how do you? Uh, I don't. I don't understand how. Well, if he was being mistreated, why? You know, again, you, maybe it's wonderful for you, but what about for your father? Well, he's happy now. We have open discussions about it. He's happy now. Yeah. How many years did he waste being miserable? I don't think he wasted a lot of years being miserable. Yeah, not a lot of years. Just a few years. Yeah. Just, Ugh. Just, just probably in the beginning. Once. They so got you married, think guys are better off just tolerating crap from women? 
No, no, I'm not saying that. That's just my specific case. I just wanted to share with you. I just, okay. uh, I just felt it, it just, it just occurred. Yeah, I don't know. It just occurred to me when I heard you this morning say, you know, something, something you you said was wrong. I just figured if my dad would have would have listened, took in your advice, I, I wouldn't be here. My family wouldn't be around. Well, you know what? Uh, I think people should think twice before they treat other people like crap. I, I no, I think so too. I don't agree with what she said. I don't, I don't agree with what she did. You know, but it's just you know. I don't know. I guess I tell you what, I would have been out of there. Yeah, no, I know, I know, and and you know what, I probably would have too if I wouldn't have if my parents wouldn't have sat me down and and, and told me how they were, you know, er, earlier on, and now it's like I don't know, I, I guess I kind of think twice about it about giving people a second chance, you know, and, and you, you know, have it's, one it's, life, it's, you know what, you've only got so many years to waste. That's how I see it. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. My wife is trying to egg me into buying her some leather pants. She wants other men to look at her ass the way you do. Right. Why would you want to make it easier for them to enjoy your wife's ass? Exactly. I should buy her a damn moo-moo. The Tom Likey Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. And um, well, give me the opportunity to call in and tell us things I say that you consider to be wrong. Tony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. You know, I, I uh, I'm a big fan of the show, and uh, I do have to take uh, issue with one thing that you say uh, on a regular basis, which is the fact that uh, I've heard you on more than many occasions call men who uh, who support women with children pussies. Oh, absolutely. Now, uh, which I'd like you to see it this way. I know you're open to different points of view. So I got a friend who uh, just got with a girl. Uh, he's been going out with her for two years. She has two kids from a previous. He has none. And you know what? I think he's doing the right thing. He loves this girl. He's banged his fair share of wool from here to Mississippi. But now he's, he's paying for somebody else's leftovers. Well, but the thing is, he loves this girl. He loves the kids. And you know what? He is injecting some testosterone in their sacks. So they're not going to grow up, you know, via uh, single mom. You know, these kids are... How old are these kids? What's that? How old are these kids? Uh, what, eight? I don't think beyond third grade, like eight and three or something like that. How old is uh, this woman? She is 34, 35. And your like friend that. is how old? And he's 27. 27? I mean, she's also way older than he is. Well, you know, and that's the thing. She's not really, and that's, you know. She's not now, but when he's when he's 33 and she's 40, the difference is going to be a lot more obvious. Well, she's not, be I, I will say this, she's not beaten down and ragged out like a lot Yet. of 35-year-old women are. Yet. Well, either way, I, I, I don't think that he is necessarily a pussy. I, I, I think I got to hand it to him. He knew full well what he was getting into. You know, he's digging what he's doing, and I don't think he's a pussy. I mean, you, I, I, I would not necessarily personally ever pick up another man's trash or support something, you know, some children that weren't mine. Why would I want to pay for some other man's responsibility? Exactly. Well, you know, this is something that he's choosing to do. He makes a good... I know he's chosen to do it, but why would anyone choose to do it? <laughs> well, my issue is this. He's chosen to do it, and I don't think he's a pussy. You know, well, well he's a pussy. He could be your friend, but you could have a friend who's a pussy. He is a that? pussy. He's a pussy. You know what? He could look. I I don't even think he should have sex with a single mother, but he could just hit it. He does not have to actually pay. Well, he. That's the thing. Like I said, you know, we, me and him have uh, done our damage uh, on both coasts, and uh, you know, for some reason, he digs this one. And uh, you know, I'm gonna because he's a pussy. What's that? Because he's a pussy. And when he's 32 and she's 40, it's going to become really, really obvious. You are still sticking him with that pussy. I don't know, man. Because he is a pussy. I tell you. You know, let the father of those children uh, maintain his responsibilities. Well, the thing is, you know what? They're going to grow up with a father figure. He he is... Uh, Not a father. He'll never be their father. Never. Well, at least, uh, how about this, a... Uh, someone in the formative years who's going to give him a backbone. How about well, that? Well, even that's not a guarantee because he doesn't have a backbone himself. No, how can you say that? Just because he's paying for some other man's kids. Uh, Jesus. Well, you know... This, this, you I, do I really want him that. giving kids uh, advice on what to do with their lives? Come on. Well, you know what? I don't know what the deal is with the other father, but I, I'm just saying, you know, I, I, I don't think necessarily because an, a guy picks up where another man left off necessarily constitutes him being a pussy.
Well, again, and was this woman married before? Yes. Mm-hmm. And she was uh, she was married uh, for five years, uh, and uh, I think. And she has a kid who's eight. And yeah, that's what I mean. And, se and separated or divorced for three. So uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we have a difference of opinion, but I thank you for expressing it. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. These are the things you think I'm wrong about. Uh, Tina. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tina. Hey, listen to you for a long time. Good. Show, guys. Keep it going. Yeah, when, you know, when uh, women get older, you know, you underestimate their uh, ability to uh, to pleasure the young guys out there. I, I've always told young guys that uh, since women their own age won't talk to them, to use older hey. women as a crutch until they are successful in their, their chosen field, and then they can get younger chicks. You know, I've never lied about my age, and I've really never dated anybody for any length of time that was over 30. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's great. I understand, you know? but none of them will ever marry you, dear. And uh, as long as you know oh, they're using God, you and you're married. using them, it's fine. Who wants to get married? You know, well, that's my point. You're using them; they're using you. Yeah, excellent. You know, it's no, I've told fine. guys to do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you I've recommended it. You know, but I don't recommend. I, I certainly it wouldn't be my choice if I if I wanted to have a relationship uh, or get Tom, married. Me, you, you know. No, dear. No. Yeah. Oh, dear. No. No. Sorry, dear. You know what? You're 50. At least that's what you claim. You might be more than that. No, no, no. No, I'm yeah. not. Yeah, well, again, no. dear, you know, you, you may have been hot in your day. Yeah. No, I'm hot now. No. Says you. How about you send a picture in here and we'll be the judge of that? I could do that. Yeah, why don't you? No problem. We, you never will. All, but all, all I'm saying is that hey, fifty old women don't know how to use email. Guys, what? You know, the, the women, the older women, are all settled. They know what they want. They. Well, we don't care what you want. That's the point. You see, uh, any guy who's worth his salt doesn't care what the woman wants. Oh yeah. What do we care what you want? No, no, no. I'm just saying we know what we want and we know how to take care of them. You know? Yeah, well, again, as long as we close our eyes and don't look at the bags and the sags and the veins, oh, no, the no, no, no. spider no, no. veins, the right. varicose veins, the no. stretch marks, as long as we don't look, we'll no, be fine. No stretch mark. Please. No stretch marks. There, no I've, se I've, seen, I've seen 50-year-old women naked, and I'm telling you, it's not yeah. pretty. Well, you haven't seen this one. Well, I'll tell you what, you uh, come down and show it next time I'm in town. You bet. I'll believe it when I see it. Now, hang on. Dee's going to tell you uh, how to send us a picture. All righty. Do you have any uh, nude pictures? What's that? Do you have a, a naked picture? I don't know if I'd want to send my whole naked. I could send a nice little bikini shot. All right. Send a bikini shot. I, I'm not into, you know. Send that in. Yeah, go ahead and send that in. Myself. Yeah, all right. You, you give me an address. Now, right, hold on. Dee's going to give it to you. 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> it's Marina in Covina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement? I have a question. Okay, you're always talking about, you know, men being pussies about, you know, them taking care of women's kids. Right. I want to know how you feel about women taking care of men's kids. I'll put it this way. I can understand why a woman wouldn't want to do that. And I would certainly say that if a man has saddled you with that responsibility, you're going to be stuck with the baggage of the ex-girlfriend or ex-wife. You're stuck with the baggage of the kid himself. Well, I, they're you know, they're planning on moving in probably within the next year or so. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a move in. Is that what you want? We'll a, well, right now, seriously, no, not right now. I'm not ready. Well, what to makes you think on. you're going to feel any differently in a year? Uh, maybe. Maybe might, you, you don't even know. So you've already made the plan without even knowing if it's something you want. Well, I I knew what I was getting myself into when I got with him. I'm just curious to know, like. Like, it's just, like, right now I don't want them to move in right now because I'm not ready, and he knows. Oh, well, well, what are you going to do? you got to buy a playpen or something? What are you talking about? You're not ready. What will, what, why will you be more ready in a year? I'm not, I'm only 22 right now. Well, why, so when you're 23, what makes you think you'll be ready? I don't know, maybe because I'll be more settled with him and... Oh. Jesus. That's what, that's how I'm thinking. Maybe Darling, you're I'm so thinking. immature, you just, and by the way, how old is he? He's 32. 32. And how many children does he have? He has two. And you want him to move in with his children in about a year? I live with him already. And so why will the kids be coming in a year? Where are they now? 
Well, they're with their mom right now, but they want to move in with with him. And how old are these children? One's eight. No, one's nine and one's seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you just want to be a parent. Right now, no. But I. Oh, but in a year, you'll want to be a parent to somebody else's children. I really don't want to. Somebody be a who's uh, somebody who's <laughs> somebody else's children. Somebody who'll be calling your house all the time, demanding to speak to the kids, treating you like some that bitch, is, huh? She doesn't say that. She hasn't said it yet. She's, <laughs> Her kids don't live with you yet. No, but I don't think. I mean, they they're over here every other weekend, and mm -hmm. and we always take them places and do things with them. And yeah, how much do you love that, Marina? Tell us. I I love it. I love being around them. They're they're really good kids. So you want them around. living in your house? Well, when they're there, they're really good kids. You I want them living, uh, dear? People come visit me all the time. I can't possibly imagine what it'd be like for them to be with me seven days a week. Yeah, that. That's what I'm kind of... This is 24-7, darling. This is all day, all night, every single day. Yeah. The days you want to go out at night. The days you want to go on vacation. The days you just want to stay in bed and have sex all day. <laughs> 24 hours a day. And you, you really think you're mature enough to know what that means? I don't think you are. I, I don't know. I, I'm not ready. I'm not mature. But, yeah, but the, the, dear, you're, you're 22. In a year, you'll be 23. You will still not be ready. Yeah, that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. You're right about that. Mm -hmm. so. Whose kid is that? Oh, that kid is my girlfriend's kid. We just picked her up from her grandma's house. Mm -hmm. Carpooling. Or I'm carpooling today. <laughs> you're carpooling. Okay. Yeah, I carpool with a coworker. Now, you are using birth control, aren't you, sweetheart? Yes, I am using birth control. So you're not planning on doing anything uh, ridiculous yourself, are you? No, not at all. I don't want any kids, so I'm 27 of my own. So. Right. Okay. All right, dear. Well, it's been a peach of a time. Thank you. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. Randy, hello. Hey, Tom. What's up, man? Not much. Hey, you know, uh, first off, I gotta let you know that uh, you know I, I really enjoy the show. Um, uh, a lot of the advice you give me, you know, I, I put it put it to, uh, to work in my life. You know, very positive effect in my life. You know, a lot of good things happening with it. Uh, there's one thing that I'm kind of confused about, or maybe you know, I, I need some more um, information from you. Um, it, it had to do with the kids, because like I, I've I've been married for seven years and I got a, a, a four year old boy. And and I'm telling you, man, um, my son. I mean, he gives me a lot of joy in my life. I mean, it's it's cool having a kid. And well, and no one's not... told anybody don't have kids. Okay, I, I mean, I, I I like kids. I just don't happen to want to have any. But well, what, I, what I say to guys is, don't have kids with somebody you're just having sex with. Don't have kids before the age of 25. At least I would say 30, 35 is more like it. Well, actually, I, I was uh, I was uh, 33 at the time. No, well, there you go. Yeah, I was 33, and, you know, it's... it's. And well, I'll tell you what, though, I mean... Just you know, because I don't want to have kids doesn't mean I don't think other people should. I mean, I, I, mean, I definitely, you know, like what you're saying. I'm, I'm definitely going to Boys Night Out, you bet. Good. I'll be there. Glad to hear it. I'm out of time for this hour, Randy. I appreciate the call. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.